The problem we have today is not only is food aid decreasing because the world's surpluses are decreasing. Fewer nations have extra food to give to those in need, but the needs are growing. So we have, for the first time in human history, more than a billion hungry people on Earth. This has gone up dramatically in just the past two years because of the food crisis, which doubled the price of food and the financial crisis. I want to point out when I'm talking about food aid, we're talking about this is actually a cup from Rwanda from our program. We're often talking about one humble cup of porridge for a child a day. This is not, you know, meat and potatoes and rice and falafel and everything that one would expect in a full meal. It's one humble cup of porridge and we cannot even meet this for about half the people we've identified in urgent need. The number that you've come out with in your report, one billion hungry people in the world, is quite shocking. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind it's about what, just over six billion people in the mm -hmm. world, so about a sixth of the population mm -hmm. goes hungry. But with growing population, global growing population, most of which mm -hmm. the ex exponential growth happening in the developing world, mm -hmm. so poorer countries, is that just going to get worse and worse as the countries that can least afford it are going to become more and more populated? Well, it doesn't have to get worse or, and worse. China was our biggest program 20 years ago. When the leaders of China decided that hunger was unacceptable in their country, they have now become a donor nation. Brazil was one of our biggest programs just 20 years ago. Brazil today is defeating hunger as it grows economically and becomes an, an agricultural powerhouse. Countries, when they decide to tackle it, can do it. Even poorer countries like Ghana and Malawi. We know this. My ancestors come from Ireland, where there was famine after famine after famine. Today, we don't expect a famine in Ireland, but this was just two generations ago. So hunger doesn't require new science new technologies, new inventions. We know how to defeat it. It takes political will. How many leaders in the world wake up and say, not under my watch will a child die from hunger? If every single one did, I guarantee you the problem would be gone. Problem is right now that a lot of those political leaders are waking up to an entry full of domestic issues, among which, of mm -hmm. course, is the financial crisis, which is affecting many wealthy mm -hmm. Western countries. You're asking for $3 billion to make mm -hmm. up the shortfall in your 2009 budget. Do you think you're going to get it? If not, do you have a plan B? Well, right now, the world is in a mess. And so we have urgently hungry people, many of whom will actually die if we don't step up to the plate. So we're losing a child every five seconds to hunger, and it doesn't cost that much to meet the needs until we get our act in order more broadly and globally. So we need two tracks. One is the long-term solutions, which can be put in place. We know how to do it. The world can do it. And we have to keep up the pressure on the emergency assistance. The problem today is just doing what we did five years ago isn't enough with these crises we have to step up to the plate more. So for the World Food Program, we need basically double what we did a few years ago until we get out of this mess. The World Food Program gets bigger during hard times, gets smaller when times are not that rough, and right now we're in a very bad time.